I give you word for word. He said, we're not like BMW. We're not like Mercedes. We don't want our cars on every block. Let me tell you why I absolutely hate the Range Rover Supercharged. Now, if you want to go 150, that you need cajones. Hello and welcome to today's episode of Alpha TV. Today, we are in a 2018 Range Rover Supercharged that belongs to my friend right over here. It's a 2018 Range Rover Supercharged. How much does this cost, buddy? Tell me. It's like 115 and change. Wonderful. I'm so handsome. I'm so fancy. No romance. Got my baby and she right, she make you vanish. No time to play, got book days. Always knew I'd make a way. Send a the bill, they send a the pay. Keep it real, keep the record straight. Keep it real, no time to fake. Authentic in my own lane. I am me till I'm in the grave. Trans said I got style for you. Ain't seen you at the top of the million dollar question. I don't even think you know the answer to this. I do. How much horsepower does this have? 523 horsepower? Yeah, somewhere around there. 500 horsepower. Now let me start off and let me start off with this. Let me tell you why I absolutely hate the Range Rover Supercharged. This is why. Any car I get into now is just absolute garbage once you get into a car like this. There's a biker. We're going to be careful. Slow it down. Don't want him to call the cops. That was cool. <laughs> so we get in the Range Rover 2018, and immediately this is the essence of luxury. Everything in here is refined. Everything in here is beautiful. You can tell that the the English and the Indian brains combined to make <laughs> a piece of beautiful machinery. The steering wheel. You know I love my steering wheels. Oof, the ergon you see how it pushes back in here? It feels great in my hands. And this this steering wheel is like from 2030. It's out of this world in regards to the controls I have. I got menus, I got dials, I got things I don't even know what to press. It keeps me, is this what keeps me in my lane? Yeah. You guys wanna see a zero to 60 real quick? Let's do it. Yes or no? Is there a launch control on a Range Rover? No. No? Are we in sport mode? Yeah. All right. We're gonna launch it at 2,000 2, RPM. Ready, set. So one of the things that I didn't realize when I was driving this car uh, a few days ago is this car has a heads up display. Who is this tall that has that I have to look this high to see the heads up display? Can you move that heads up display up and yeah, up and down? Yeah, yeah. Right. Which it's, I it's set up for me. You're that tall? You're taller than me? You're that tall? You're taller than me? It's probably sit differently. Oh, that could be it too. So one of my favorite things about the Range Rover is the dials. There's two beautiful dials. It's a digital screen, but you can switch it around. So let, let's say you're gonna go do a top speed run and you wanna see the navigation. You can make it so that there's one dial in the middle and you can see the navigation. Or you can make it so that it's only navigation and that you just see your speedometer very little in the, in the bottom, which is what I love. It's really customizable, the whole car. You can literally do whatever you want with it. All your specifications. So you custom ordered this car, right? Yeah. Can we talk about, let's talk about the first time that we thought that this guy was gonna buy a Range Rover, right? Let's, let's share the story. We walk in the store, we see the guy, we're looking, and we, we walk in and we're like, all right, we're ready to buy a Range Rover. It was probably like, what, a Wednesday or a Thursday? Yeah. And I think you said, all right. We need it by Saturday. We need it by Saturday. I'm ready to buy a Range Rover, we'll pay for it right now, no problem, but we need it by Saturday. The guy just looked at us and he laughed. <laughs> and he's like, what? He's like, you think you're gonna get this by Saturday? That's cute. He's like, his, I give you word for word. He said, we're not like BMW. We're not like Mercedes. We don't want our cars on every block. We, uh, what did he say? Hey, how long does it take? I think he said six months is six what he months. told us. That's did it take you? It took us six months. Really? It really? Okay, he wasn't lying. I thought he was BSing a little. Five months. Five months. Yeah. But the only thing I didn't like about his statement when he said that is, 
I don't know why. Maybe it's because you got it now. And like once you see somebody with the car, you notice the car all over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I see Range Rovers all over the so world I. right now. So do I. It's ridiculous. <laughs> now, if you weren't gonna get a Range Rover, what car were you considering? What are, What are some other cars? I know there was at one point before you bought this, you were considering the Mercedes ML sixty three. Oh, we were gonna get the or GL no, the GLS sixty three. Yeah, that was big contender and. We actually went to the Mercedes to rally, and we told them that we wanted it. We priced it out. It just came out too much for my More dad. More than this? Yeah, it was like what? 130 something. The way we wanted it. A Mercedes GLS is more than a Range Rover. GLS 63 AMG. Yeah. I can't believe that. I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, I always yeah. thought it was like probably. I always thought it was like probably at 100, and this was the most expensive. No. Looks wise, I don't know. That looks like a tank. Yeah, yeah, it's a bigger car too. So we were gonna get it, and then my parents just didn't want to. And then three months later, we ordered this. Wow. So then, I think one of the most beautiful things about this car is the looks. Every angle from the outside, it is just a badass whip. Especially the way that this guy custom ordered it. It's a white exterior with everything else is gloss black. Whether it be gloss black, gloss black grill diffusers in the front and back there was that one issue you did have with the front diffuser yeah so yeah. this car has can you explain to us a little bit it's about like, the suspension how that works i guess it's sort of like airbag suspension yeah so when you drive there's a cruising there's a cruising height and then once you turn off the car it lowers so you can step out my mom took it to work and she parked over the parking stop like the that, thing that stops you yeah and i guess a, lip, a part of it got stuck on the concrete and once you backed up before it raised, before the car raised up, it came off, and how the much, problem never happened again. Though, how much is that? Is that diffuser piece new? How much were they trying to quote you? Like a thousand dollars, but then the Range Rover, the one of the service workers was like, "Don't worry, I got you." As as I was walking out, he's like, "I got you. Fixes in five minutes." And they were just trying to charge me out the ass for it. A favor and hold on. There's a straightaway. <laughs> that exhaust one of the most beautiful exhausts forget on an SUV on any car in general but continue so um, pretty much we got like the protection package when we bought the car mm -hmm. for four years and it covers everything so including maintenance not maintenance not yeah. not your service but everything else so, like scratches like so scratches on the car on the car up wow. to like six inches they'll, 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 they'll fix it the rims, the tires, everything like that. So like this time. So when what I got, about like normal wear and tear on a tire? No. No. Okay. So normal wear and tear is regular, but like. If you get like a flat the, tire or something. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And they changed out both our rims this time for free. Wow. Cause, That's cause expensive. Bought, yeah, yeah. So there was scuffs on both the rims. I just wanted them changed, and they're like. And they're black rims, so it's very easy to scuff, yeah. and yeah. you'll you'll notice the scuff. That how much? Do you know how much that protection plan cost you? Because those was, rims probably cost a thousand each. Yeah, yeah. So it was twenty two hundred for four for years. The, Wow, so it already paid for everything, off. and that that includes like one free key a year if you lose it, and a key is like four hundred fifty bucks. Wow. Yeah. So it already paid off. If you if you plan it, on if you plan on having black rim, basically you should get it because yeah. you're guaranteed. You should get it regardless, it. just because yeah. it covers everything on the inside too, the leather and all the stuff, the scratches on the leather. They'll change change out the whole piece of leather. That's it's stitching wild. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. How much was maintenance when you first went? When it did you a, take it at five thousand? No, first service was right now ten thousand. Oh, it was nine thousand. Nine thousand. So currently we're at a little under nine thousand. Do you know how much they charged you? It was because I got the new rims. I got it realigned and everything. So I ended up paying eight hundred, but I think it was four ninety five for the service. And then I paid like some. Other, I had to get the registration change. I mean the. Inspection and stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff like that. So normally, eight hundred. So if it was just a regular service, five hundred. Five hundred. Yeah. Which isn't bad because and it's only once a year. Yeah. Pretty much. Or like depending how much you drive. When we used to take our Benz to the dealer, we used to have to go like twice a year, and every time, literally, we would never leave with the bill under a thousand dollars. Never. When we had the CLA forty-five, we got it serviced once. That first service. This is like two weeks before the accident, and paid twelve hundred dollars yeah. and I was about to get the brakes changed because we needed the brakes changed. It was like an extra like fifteen hundred on top. 
They, uh, and luckily, I did it. They Mercedes is wild. With yeah, their they charge so much. They're ridiculous. You need like, to do this. You need to do. They have an A. They have an A service, B service, C service. You need to do X, Y, and Z. It's ridiculous. BMW by far the best service ever. So or, they take care of it for four years. For free. For free. For free. Yeah. Now I think the only other competitors, if you want to go higher, that I can think of when you want to go exotic you get is the exotic trucks. Yeah, like the Bentley Bentaygas, the Lamborghini Urus, which everybody. And their mother is in love with, which is called them. sixty. Fast. Oh, there's a biker. I don't want him to yell at me. You gotta be, you know, you gotta be cautious to our neighbors, our friendly yeah. neighbors here. It's one of the, this exhaust is hands down one of the most greatest exhaust, greatest notes. Like you almost can't believe, like it's coming from an SUV. Like, you, you, this car will fly past you and you'll be like, that sound is coming from that car? Like, really? Seriously? Like, it's ridiculous. And this is the sport package. This is a supercharged package. So it has over 500 horsepower. It's around 520 horsepower. So the amount of power it has is ridiculous. And that's why I said before, it's, it's kind of like a, it's a love-hate relationship. I hate this car because it makes every other car feel inferior. Every other car, like, for example, I was in my friend Deepak's BMW 335. And I think to the normal person, that's a fast car. Um, and I got in and I was like, yeah, it's all right. You know? <laughs> I guess it's quick. I mean, to me, I mean, once you, once you drive a car like this, you're like, every car you get into, yeah, it's whatever. I feel like that too. When this car was in service, it, we got the F Pace as a rental. Yeah. And I would drive that and I'm like, it doesn't feel the same. Not as fun. It's not as fun. It doesn't look as good. Literally everywhere you go, I think everyone's staring at you. Cause it's literally it, this is a work of art. It's it's yeah. beautiful car. And we have some friends that also have this car. And when you have multiple Range Rovers back to back, two or three Range Rovers, you look like a militia pulling up to yeah, a party. Yeah. Whether it be a party, the mall, you literally look like a militia and everyone is staring at you. And for me, I, I usually wait till the end to answer this question, whether or not I would buy this car. What do you think my answer is? I don't know, cause you have, your taste in cars is, I don't know, very exotic. You, well exotic also, but you like, you like a lot of different cars. You want a lot of different cars. So it's possibly a yes, but I don't know. You're 100% right. This for me, without a doubt, there is, there's not even a question in my mind. I think once, there, you know what, <laughs> let me actually preface that. Let me, let me preface that by saying, five years ago, four years ago, I hated Range Rovers. Cause I, just to me, a Range Rover was, oh, it's a soccer mom's car. Everybody has a Range Rover. I don't want a Range Rover. And then, and I've driven Range Rovers then, but I didn't really like, I didn't go over like 40, 50 miles an hour in it. Now, now that I've gotten to drive this guy's Range Rover, and I see just how fast it is. I think that alone, and fast, and looks, and the exhaust, I think that's a trifecta right there. Once you he see and experience those three things, you're like, ah, now I get it. Now I know why, and it's really out of this world. You look into it and you research and you see guys who do go off-road, they never have any problems with the Range Rover. They consider the Range Rover the best vehicle to go off-roading. This off -roading. car is made to go off-roading. Yeah. Like, there's I mean, so many options to go off-roading. There's like ice mode, mud mode, sand mode, grass mode. I'm the Avatar! You gotta deal with it! It's like whatever you're driving on, it has it. And I think a lot of people, they buy Jeeps, especially in our area, it snows a lot. Well, yeah. it doesn't snow that much, but when it does snow, you want a nice SUV. Like, yeah. for example, my dad says he will never buy another car again because he wants SUVs for the two days it snows in New York, <laughs> which just makes no sense. But I'm like, okay, if you're going to do that, then the car to instantly that comes to mind is Jeep. It's going to be good. And it's really not. If you want a safe, secure car that's going to be good in the mud, that's going to be good in the rain, that's going to be good in the snow, this is my pick. Yeah. This, I think... Because I even have guys with the, 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 the Jeep Wranglers with the huge uh, wheels. In my head, again, I, maybe I'm just stupid. Well, obviously... In my head, again, I would think that that's amazing in the snow. You know that's terrible? You know that's really? like one of the worst cars to drive? Really? They Every that. single person that has it, they're like, I hate it. I want to get rid of it. It sucks. <laughs> it's terrible. They're like, a Toyota Camry can drive better than this. 
and which is really surprising to me. So if you want a good family car that's good in all weathers, that's fun, that's safe, that's secure. If you need, if you if you're a dad and you need that minivan feel, but you don't want to get a minivan, this is the car to get. This is hands down by far the car to get. And when I say I would get this for myself, when I actually think about it, I think this is like one of those cars that I would get for my wife. And then but secretly, like yeah, secretly, <laughs> like, it's mine. And she'd be like, oh my god, thank you so much. And in my head, I'm like, it's mine. Yeah, like, you know it's mine, right? I'm like, I got it for you, but secretly, it's my car. Because, the, like, that noise is just, like, it blows my mind. It's, you know what it is. I'll tell you the secret sauce, you know. Before 2012, even before the generations, especially in 09 and 08, I would never, ever consider buying a Range Rover because they had so many electrical problems. But what had happened was, the Indians came in, and you know that with their brains they cleared out all the electrical problems they cleared out all the engine problems and they manufactured this beautiful exhaust so any car manufacturers you're, you're wondering your sales are a little sluggish your cars are a little eh. the solution is you hire a few indians and it makes everything all better that's 100 percent the solution now let's talk a little bit about the entertainment system it is it's the meridian it's like the upgraded Range Rover one. Okay. I love the sound quality. It the bass is a little ridiculous. It's it's ridiculous. so loud. And there's so many options when you get to like the sound. You can put on like Dolby um, audio, yeah, or Meridian, yeah, yeah, yeah. or like whatever type of. There's like different settings for it too, which is crazy. And there's literally the, everywhere I look, and I'm, I'm just looking around. There's so many speakers. Yeah, there's like 19 there's, speakers or something. It's ridiculous. ridiculous. <laughs> now, in the middle over here, we don't have one. We have two screens. One huge ass screen here, another huge ass screen here. Now, with these screens, it has a beautiful map. It kind of reminds me of Google Maps because it looks that crystal yeah, clear. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. And the beautiful thing about this map is it tells you when there's a red light camera. Speed so, cameras speed, also. Really? Yeah, speed cameras also. So right when you hit, when you see that yellow light and you're wondering, hmm, should I gun it or should I? <laughs> Should I stomp on the brakes? You look real quick at your navigation. Up, oh, there's a camera. You brake. don't need to look at it. Usually, so if you're pulling up to a cro uh, intersection where there's a camera, uh -huh. it'll beep, like the car will beep and let you know beforehand that there's a camera coming. So up. basically, the Indians <laughs> wanted you to blow all the lights. That's basically what happened. It's my life. What they want, I wanna do. My lord. Now, I will say, the Indians, someone was sleeping on the job at one point. Um, I was trying to leave Manhattan the other day, and it looks beautiful, by the way, because when you get to Manhattan, they like 3D. Image um, all the buildings. Yeah, image all the buildings. I was like, wow, that's Manhattan. Oh, that looks kind of beautiful. And you have, you want to show this real quick? The roof over here? I hope you guys can see this, but it's the hugest. Sun moon Not even roof. a sunroof. What do you even call this? Moon. Panoramic roof. That's what it's called. It's yeah. a panoramic roof. And when you're going through a huge industrial industrial area, bruh, when you're going through a huge urban area like a city, it is the most beautiful thing to just look, look up. Look up and you can see everything. It's wild. And then can you show us that little magic trick you did right now? Nope. So it's nope. Like gesture control. There's like small things here and there that you can just wave your hand and it'll do. So it wow. opens and closes it. Are you guys ready? talk about speed so there was this one time we actually took this car all the way down to Mexico now <laughs> when we went to Mexico I think that oh hold on see we got a yellow it didn't beep so that means I can go uh, when we took this car down to Mexico it's like so easy to hit 120 130 it's still it is pretty easy still you can that if I'm gonna go do a run I'll do a quick 60 to 130 run quick get it out of my system go now if you want to go 140, you need a little bit of balls. It's doable. It's not, not a lot of balls. It's just a little bit of balls. Now, if you want to go 150, that you need cajones. You need balls, but it's doable. Luckily for us, we both have big balls. Big balls. And when we went to Mexico, we both hit it. What was the fastest? Have you? I think when I when I was in the back seat. 150 is. It's I think limited. I saw you hit 151 though. It's it's limited I think at 150. 
Or how I, sure are you about that? Because I think it's 155 they limited that. No. Uh, I actually don't know for sure. I hit 150 the other day. So. In Mexico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in Mexico. In, in Mexico. So, 150 in an SUV. And when you're going that fast, especially, let me let me also preface this by saying, I hate SUVs because I hate the feeling of when you drive it. It feels like a tank, which it does feel a little bit raised, but when you're going that fast, I don't mind it. Yeah, you're flying. And you're flying. Yeah. It, it, like, it feels, that's why I like cars because you feel nice and secure. When you're going this fast and when you drive, you is this lowered too? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's lowered. So it's more lower, lowered to the ground. So you feel nice and secure. And it looks like, well, it's because it is on bags, but it looks like a car that's on, like, who put in aftermarket bags and is really low to the ground. And I love it. I absolutely love it. I'm 100% without a doubt in my mind going to buy it. And I think the only question I have is, will I buy one or will I buy two? <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Because I think, I'm telling you, when you have two cars that are spec exactly the same way, especially the Range Rovers, you look like a freaking Boss. militia. You look like a militia pulling up. Everyone's going to move out of the way. And I know somebody who has two blacked out Range Rovers and everywhere him and his wife and everywhere they pull up, they just look so gangster. And I honestly, I think that's goals, two blacked out Range Rovers. How long do you plan on keeping this car for? We were honestly thinking five years. Yeah. After that, it's the just... The protection package for four, right? Yeah. Have you ever heard of like any stories of like certain like BMWs, for example, after like five, six years, they're kind of no bueno. Actually, no, I'll go I've never heard anything about this, so I, I honestly think it will be solid four or five years. At that point, we're just going to want a new car just because this is going to be old at that point. Yeah. So, really? Well, Can I buy a car then? <laughs> <laughs> Can you please? Can we put this on agreement right now? Like, would well, you? We're talking about what? 2023. At that point, it's 2018. Why are you going to want a five year old car? All right. I don't mind. <laughs> as long as it's still got 500 horsepower, I don't mind. <laughs> As long as we'll take a, a nice price cut, I wonder how much they that goes for. But it depreciates a lot, though. Yeah. Yeah. Range Rover dude. So you and you so. bought this. You didn't lease this. No. Yeah, we bought it. Wow. I can't do a car review and not tell you one thing I don't like. So the one thing I don't like about Range Rovers is the back seat. Now it's not that they're not comfortable. It's just that when there are three people in the back row, in the middle row right here, it gets a little tight. And I wasn't expecting that. I thought I don't know why. But in my head, I was like, oh, no problem at all. It was me, and I'm pretty big. And then my friend Karun, who's average, and then my friend John, who's as skinny as a stick. And then you'd figure with that math equation, we'd all kind of fit. It was a little tight, which was was surprising. Um, but other than that, as long as you don't have three guys in the back, you're fine. That's the only thing I dislike about it. And I think for Rage Overs, especially... I think probably 2014 and up is a safe bet to get as in regards to the electronics in regards to the reliability of it and I think you're in pretty good hands if you have a hundred fifteen plus thousand dollars please feel free to go buy it at the store but remember don't go in there and say hey I want this car by Saturday you're just gonna <laughs> laugh at you you gotta say hey I need this car in six months um, but yeah what did you guys think about this car review? Is it bueno? No bueno? Did I go fast enough? I definitely went fast enough. Did you, you have to say how fast you went? Honestly, I wasn't even paying attention because I was focused on the road. You were... No, let's not talk about it. I don't need <laughs> local authorities coming after me. That's it for today. Thank you for tuning in on today's episode of Car Reviews and the Range Rover Sports Supercharge. That is a close cut. I have not seen... It's not my car. <laughs> if it was my car, I might have taken that cut. But if it's not my car... Can you... I'm going three digits with one hand on the wheel. That's how safe and secure I feel. Oh, I'm totally taking that. Because see, it's a yellow, but it didn't alert me, so I'm going to take it. It's been fun. It's been real. Make sure you smash the subscribe button. And I got to go. See you later.